This Equipment World video is brought to you by Philips 66 Lubricants, keeping the world running smoothly. Hey guys, what's going on? Wayne here. So over the past several years, John Deere has invested pretty heavily in its articulated dump truck lineup, trying to make these trucks easier to use, more productive, and more fuel efficient. Makes sense. Well, the culmination of its most recent efforts is the new E2 series lineup, launched recently with the introduction of the 410 E2 and the 460 E2. Now, because these are new trucks, there are obviously a couple of things that you're gonna expect. A new cab, more technology, but there are really three significant changes made with these trucks. First is a redesigned and easier to load dump body. Second is improved drive modes. And third is a significant increase in fuel economy. And you might be thinking, hmm, drive modes, increased fuel economy, He's talking about an eco mode. Well, there is an eco mode on these trucks, but the significant increase in fuel economy that I'm talking about actually comes through normal operation, not just an eco mode. All right, so there's lots to talk about with these new trucks. Let's get into it. All right, so let's start things off with that new dump body because there are several changes to talk about here. But before we get into those changes, I do want to note payload and capacity ratings. The 410E2 has a rated payload of 82,157 pounds, while the 460E2 is 92,197 pounds. Heaped capacity on the 410 is 30 cubic yards and 33 cubic yards on the 460. All right, but back to that dump body. The first change that Deere has made to this redesigned dump body is that they've made it wider. And with these new trucks, you really get three benefits because of that wider dump body. First, the truck's center of gravity is lowered by that wider body, and that gives you a little bit more stable feel while you're driving around. Second, the wider body puts the bin that much closer to other machines for easier loading. And third, it provides tire coverage, almost like a big fender. So that's going to keep material that may fall out of the bin from going into the tires and wheels. And it's also going to keep material that may sling off the tires from going anywhere but right into the bin itself. All right, another big change Deere has made with this redesigned dump body is that it's lower. Specifically, the side rails on this new bin are about six inches lower than the dump body found on the E-Series trucks. The lower we keep those bin heights, uh, the faster it is for that machine that's loading it. So if you think about an excavator that's sitting on a bench trying to load these trucks, if we lower that bin height, now that excavator operator doesn't have to raise that material quite as high to swing over that truck to place that material. So we can ultimately make his cycle times quicker, which lets that truck be more productive. But look, the dump body on these new trucks isn't just easier to load because it's lower. Another improvement to this redesigned body that loader operators will appreciate is that Deere has ditched uh, this, these kind of sloping rails that the previous generation E-Series trucks had that kind of sloped from the front of the machine and kind of tapered down toward the rear of the machine. Deere has gotten rid of those in favor of parallel side rails. These new parallel rails give you the exact same load height across the entire length of the dump body. The result is that now, no matter where you approach this truck from, you can expect the exact same load height and you'll be able to reach further into the dump body thanks to that lower overall height. All right, so one more note on these new bin rails, they have a sloped design. Now the previous generation E-Series trucks, they had a, a flat design. And what that did, basically when you were loading the truck and let's say you, you loaded a little bit too much material, that material, that extra material would just sometimes kind of hang out there on those flat side rails. And what that meant was that you'd leave the, uh, the wherever you were loading the dirt at, you'd, you'd, you'd move to the new location. And as you were moving, that material could fall off and leave a mess where you don't wanna leave a mess. So these new sloped bin rails actually will push material into the bed so nothing can sit on top of them. So that material is either just gonna fall off when you're loading the truck or it's going to stay nice and tight there in the bed instead of making a mess as you move. Moving to either end of this new dump body, the headboard is actually larger on this new dump body than what was found on the E-Series trucks. And that's gonna give you a little bit more protection of the truck's articulation. And second, Deere has also made some pretty big changes to the tailgate. And this is really, really important for those customers that you know, maybe they're working in some really wet material or a slurry type material. We've actually increased the ceiling of the tailgate to the bin. So now when they put that wet material in, it's going to stay in the bin where it belongs and not leak out. Now, these changes to the tailgate ended up having another benefit, and that is easier transportability thanks to a decrease in the truck's overall width. Now, because this tailgate doesn't stick out as wide as the one found on the bodies on the previous generation E-Series trucks, the 460E2 has a width now under 12 
feet even with that tailgate installed. One final note on these new bodies, if you are buying a 460E2, you're gonna have the option of purchasing a new ejector body that Deere has built in partnership with Philippi Hagenbutch. Especially if you're in that really, really sticky material that's hard to clean out of the bin, that ejector body is gonna help push that material out so you, you stay productive. They're also really handy um, when there's low dump clearance. And what I mean by that is, if you're working under overpasses or inside buildings where you don't have the ability to put in all the way up, uh, this is really gonna help get that material out. Steep slopes is another one. So not having to raise that bin all the way up um, lets you be more productive. So you can actually spread material on the go when you don't have to worry about the stability of the truck. And it also helps with mixing materials, or even if you think about, you know, that poor dozer operator at the fill site, sometimes they have a hard time keeping up. And if that, if that truck's equipped with an ejector style dump body, they can actually lay that material out so that the dozer operator doesn't have to push through a big pile and it lets the whole operation become more, more efficient. Now, before we get into the engine on these new E2 series trucks, I do want to take a second to tell you about our sponsor for this video, and that is Phillips 66 Lubricants. Look, construction and mining are tough environments. You're moving tons of earth, and you're doing so in extreme hot and cold conditions. And the machines that you're using to do that work with need the toughest lubricants available to protect them, to protect your investment. Now, there are thousands of mining operations in the United States, and 60% of them trust one brand to keep their equipment going, and that's Phillips 66 Lubricants. Oh look, they've put thousands of hours into testing, and when you look at the results of those tests, it's pretty clear why so many operations put their trust in Phillips 66. Take Gardol ECT, for example. It far outperforms the competition in wear protection and corrosion tests. So look, whatever you've got, graders, end loaders, dump trucks, Phillips 66 will protect it. Did you know they even have a technical support hotline? You can call the Phillips 66 technical hotline and talk to experts about product questions or general questions about lubricants. Give them a call at 1-877-445-9198. Phillips 66 lubricants, keeping the world running smoothly. All right, back to these new E2 series trucks. Now, both the 410 and 460 E2 are powered by the same engine, a Deere Powertech 6135, a six cylinder, 13.5 liter engine. That engine's gonna give you 441 horsepower on the 410 and 481 horsepower on the 460. Now, even though you have the same engine in both of these trucks, because that engine is electronically controlled, Deere can tailor it so specifically to the needs of each truck and the customers of each of those trucks and their different capabilities, that one piece of engine hardware can effectively perform like two different engines. And you know, it can be, whether it's injection timing or the fuel delivery, the geometry of the turbo, um, the type of governor, how, that, how all those different components interact with each other we're able to really tailor these engines to do exactly what we want them to do. And look, there's several reasons why Deere goes to the trouble of making one engine be able to do the work of two. There's fewer components to manufacture, there's fewer engines to build, and then there's servicing commonality, making it easier on technicians who are going between trucks. But for owners and operators, the primary benefit of electronically controlled engines is that it really allows manufacturers to really dial in for each engine on each specific truck, dial in a balance of power, torque, and fuel economy. Now, with this new powertrain on the E2 series trucks, Deere has made improvements to the wiring harness for better durability. But as Corey discusses here, they've also made improvements to the engine itself to better withstand parasitic load. And that's really all the load on the engine at any given time that's kind of caused by all of the stuff that's running in the background. So if you think about cooling fans or different pumps, whether it's hydraulic, cooling, um, AC condensers, we really looked at those and tried to figure out how to make the entire system as efficient as possible. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna free up that power that we can use when we really want it, right? So when we're trying to move material in these trucks, now we have that added power that's not going, what I'm gonna call to waste, and we're also gonna save some fuel by doing that as well. In fact, all of these changes with this new engine add up to a 7% increase 
in fuel economy on both of these E2 series trucks. And the key stat here is, as I said earlier, that this 7% increase in fuel economy comes while the truck is running in normal mode. And that is one of three drive modes that Deere has put on these new trucks. Now, if you've driven the previous generation E series trucks, Deere says that this normal mode should feel pretty familiar. Performance is similar, and you get the big benefit of that 7% increase in fuel economy. And that's thanks to the changes to the engine, the optimizations, and those improvements with parasitic load that we were talking about earlier. Now, if you want even further fuel savings and you're in a situation where prioritizing fuel savings over performance kind of makes sense, then you can switch the truck into eco mode. Deere says the eco mode on these E2 series trucks increases fuel economy by 12%, and that's over the already more fuel efficient normal mode. What eco mode's gonna do is it's gonna smooth out the uh, response of the engine. So if you get an operator in there and they immediately mash the accelerator and try to take off, it's still gonna go and it's gonna be productive but it's gonna smooth out those engine accelerations. So it's gonna allow that machine to get up to speed, maybe just a little bit longer, uh, but it's gonna, it's gonna get there. Uh, the other thing it's gonna do is lower the overall engine speed. So we're not gonna spin the engine as fast, which is gonna help save some fuel. Um, with that said, it's still gonna achieve that maximum ground speed. So you're still gonna be able to be productive and you're still gonna be able to get the material where it needs to go. Now, the final of these three drive modes is traction mode. And whenever you're driving the trucks through soft terrain that you know is going to be a pain to navigate through, you can switch the truck into traction mode. And a couple of things are gonna happen. Now, first up in traction mode, the trucks kind of lock into a first gear start. And then once you're rolling as needed, the trucks are gonna automatically sense when the differential locks need to be turned on. And that includes both the interaxle differential locks, which, which locks the front to the mid to the rear, and the cross axle locks. And all of that combines for true six wheel drive in traction mode. Now, the other cool part about this mode is that while it does automatically engage the differential locks, it still allows you to manually engage the differential locks when you need to. So you still get the control over the differential locks, but with the benefit of the truck helping you out if you don't wanna worry about it. Now for this new traction mode and to make that automatic differential lock more accurate, Deere has also implemented new wheel speed sensors on the E2 series trucks. Now, unlike the old sensors, which were radar based ground speed sensors and thus kind of required uh, a vulnerable mounting position and obviously visibility to the ground itself, these new sensors are integrated into the axle itself and they measure wheel speed. Being integrated into the axles, each axle on the truck has two wheel speed sensors, one for each wheel. And these sensors are monitoring the RPMs of each wheel and trying to identify any mismatches between groups of wheels and the individual wheels themselves. And that's how it's gonna basically determine if anything is slipping through an algorithm. So it knows what's going on and what speed each wheel should be at, whether it's in a turn or straight, and it can automatically adjust on the fly to start applying diff lock and really tailor it down to make sure that we're getting the most tractive effort out of these trucks that we can. Now, in addition to the drive modes that Deere has introduced on these new E2 series trucks, they're also introducing transmission retarder modes. Now on the old E series trucks, Basically, you had a range of retardation from 10 to 100%, and you could kind of increase that retardation by increments of 10%. And Deere is basically trying to eliminate a lot of the guesswork that was kind of inherent to that old system with the introduction of basically three transmission retarder modes. There's low, medium, and high. The requirements that the operator needs changes whether they're laden or unladen, or if they're in steep conditions one day and flat the next, or even how they drive the truck, those, those settings needed to be adjusted. And basically they pick the setting that appeals to their driving style. And when we do that, the machine's smart enough now to know whether it's laden or unladen. So it'll automatically adjust the amount of retardation based on the capacity of the truck. So as soon as the operator releases the accelerator pedal, it's gonna start applying uh, the retardation and it's gonna build it up as it needs more or less, which is really gonna help save service brakes and make the truck extremely controllable. Uh, and even, even help, have, we have a feature called uh, descent control. So if you're going down a steep grade and you get into the service brakes, uh, it's gonna to know to start applying more retardation based on 
the characteristics of the truck. Now, beyond all of the productivity and efficiency improvements that Deere has made with these E2 series trucks, they're also introducing a new cab. And really the changes in this new cab are all in the name of, of more automotive styling. So you're, you're gonna have fewer switches to look at. Um, everything is a little bit more tightly integrated. You're gonna have easier access to your climate controls there overhead. And Deere has also integrated the turn signals, the lights and the wipers all into your steering column. Now, available options on this new cab are automatic climate control, a heated and ventilated seat, a four point retractable seat harness and a system called seat belt minder that basically puts a nice little green beacon on the top of your truck to let everyone around you know that you are in fact buckled in. That seat belt minder system also integrates into JD Link Telematics so that you know the boss man can kind of check in on you remotely. Now on the maintenance side of these new trucks, all of your daily checks, all of your daily checks can be done from ground level. Plus, Deere has also reduced electric and hydraulic routings by about 10% to reduce potential leak points. Plus, tire pressure monitoring is standard on these trucks as is a new inline def filter. Plus, you can also opt for a factory installed auto lube system that is really one of three greasing levels offered on these trucks. And we actually offer different levels of greasing because there's different there's different thought processes behind how a machine should be greased. Um, some customers really want their operators to go around and hit every grease fitting at every grease location so they physically look at the machine. We have what's called point of use grease. It does just that. The next step up from that is what we call a, a banked grease uh, option where we actually run remote lines to a bank. So it's it's still manually greasing, but they're in a nice convenient location. The, the kind of premium package is our new factory integrated auto loop system. And this is actually extremely slick. It can be controlled through the, the PDU or the new monitor. Uh, it's tied into JD Link, so it gives you alerts if something's not working right. And it also automatically greases that machine while it's in operation. And that does some really good things for you. So if you think about how that auto loop system's pushing grease out to those pins during normal operation, it's keeping them flushed out, you know, of, of water, mud, dirt, whatever, and really keeping that joint clean. And they also have, they, they maintain that same point of use grease fitting. So even if you have an auto lube system and maybe you're worried about something or you want to be able to physically make sure you can get grease in a pin, there's still a way to get grease into that, which is, uh, it, it's a really good good tool. Well, all right, guys, that's going to wrap up our in-depth look at the new E2 series articulated dump trucks from John Deere. Let us know what you think about that new dump body, uh, the new drive modes, the improved fuel efficiency, and everything else found on these new E2 series trucks in the comments below. We really love hearing from you guys. If you like this video and found the information in it useful in any kind of way, but especially for your next machine purchase, do us a favor and hit that like button below. It really helps our channel out. And if you want more coverage of the construction industry and heavy equipment, visit us at our website at equipmentworld.com. And while you're there, subscribe to our daily newsletter, which is gonna send you all the most recent industry and equipment heavy lines to your inbox every day. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel right here on YouTube and turn on notifications, be sure to hit the bell below so you're getting alerts whenever we drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. We really appreciate the time. We'll see you in the next one.